Hey, welcome back. I got a little bit more of a casual video today. A show and tell with my draw knife collection. I'll be showing you how I keep them sharp, what I like in a draw knife, and what I don't like. I'll also be reviewing some new draw knives from the cheapest of the cheap on Amazon to what I think you should buy as a beginner. So without further ado, let's go make some shavings. First up, the 10 inch straight draw knife by Kirshen, known as Two Cherries in the States. This is the first draw knife I bought. It's what I started off with. I got a lot of use out of it. It's a great draw knife. The steel is excellent. The bevel geometry is fantastic. The back comes nice and flat in cross section. Holds a really nice edge. It comes sharp out of the box which is great, but it's not a very robust draw knife. The way that the uh, blade is integrated into the handles is a little bit cheap and flimsy. I really don't like that. Yeah, look how flimsy this is. That's really not good. You want the handles to be nice and stiff so that they can transmit all the vibrations from the wood straight into your hand. When the handle flops, it's gonna mute a lot of those vibrations and uh, you lose a lot of your refined feel that you get with a sturdy draw knife. This was a great knife. I still use it for students who come to the shop. Um, it's what I'll hand somebody when they want to learn how to carve wood. I don't really use it myself anymore. I personally don't like straight draw knives that much. I prefer a curved one for most things, except for my rough out knife. We'll get to that later. I believe I bought this for around 50 bucks when it was new but I can't find a great price nowadays. Later on, I'll talk about what I think the best replacement is um, if you're looking to buy something just like this. Okay, I've got some tough dry hickory here. Let's see how it carves. So as you can see, it's a great knife and has no trouble with this really dense and dry wood. You can, of course, also use this knife beveled down, but I think it's designed to be used beveled up, and I prefer to use it that way. It still totally works this way, and you can carve out a tighter radius with the bevel down compared to with the bevel up. Okay, next let's talk about the Narex. This, I believe this is sold as the Narex curved draw knife. In general, I really like Narex tools. They're pretty robust, um, especially for modern tools. I don't like round stock tangs on draw knives. They're a little bit weaker, but that's gonna be the reality with most modern knives. This is a fantastic knife. The steel is very good. It comes with a fuller varnish on the handles that I don't like. You know, you can take that off. The main criticism I have with this is that the bevel that it comes with is garbage. Um, the bevel comes way too steep and I had to uh, take down the whole bevel, which was quite a lot of sanding work. When I got this, I paid about 70 bucks for it. So I was a little bit upset to have to redo the bevel, which is a lot of work. Um, you shouldn't have to do that for a nice modern knife. What I use this for is to remove bark. I don't like to use my main draw knives to remove bark because there's a lot of uh, dirt and little bits of rock and junk in the bark that will chip up your draw knife over time. So I like to have a dedicated knife to take on that kind of task. Okay, here's the Narex. I don't usually use this to carve wood. I use it for debarking, but it does carve very well. Overall, 
I can't really recommend it because this knife is going for a high price nowadays and you'll have to do a lot of work uh, redoing the bevel. So it's good steel, great company overall, but uh, not the draw knife I recommend. Okay, now let me show you something that's really well designed as a comparison. This is the LNIJ White number six Cooper's knife. A Cooper makes uh, barrels. So this was probably used for making wine barrels or that sort of thing. You see it has this nice curve here so you can get in wherever you're trying to reach. The back is flat in cross section and there's a nice big bevel across the top. I love the edge geometry on this knife. It's incredibly robust. The tangs are excellent. The handle is excellent. This is everything I want in a Cooper's draw knife. It's a fantastic knife. I bought this on eBay for around 40 bucks, I think, and I did a lot of restoration on it, and it cuts like a dream now. Next up, this is a mystery knife from Joyner and Barton. I bought this on eBay for pretty cheap because it was in very rusted condition. I had to rehandle it. I really love this knife, even though I don't know what the model is. If anyone knows about it, uh, I'd really love to know. This thing is extremely well made. All of the profiles are extremely subtle and thoughtful. The way it thickens up into the tangs, the way the blade's a little bit thinner, this nice transition here. Everything's great. A neat thing about this one is that it has a relatively short sole, so it's great for cutting tight radiuses. I actually prefer to use this knife beveled down, and I use this for carving fades since it's so good at handling the tight radius of that kind of curve. The interesting thing about the handles is that I decided to go for this very blocky appearance here. You would think that would be uncomfortable, but it allows a very loose grip on the knife, so your hands don't really get tired holding this thing. Okay, so here we have it bevel up. You see this very gentle curve the blade has to it. I really like that. Okay, bevel down. You see how the cuts have a bit more of a scraping action and less of a slicing action? Another difference is that when you're cutting bevel down, you have a bigger chip breaker, which is folding back your cut. You see how they like to roll up like that? like this I'm slicing through them a little bit more next up is my main draw knife the 10 inch curve draw knife from Kirshen or Two Cherries I like to keep this knife pretty sharp I haven't sharpened it in a few months but it's still got a great edge to it this knife comes really flat from the factory has really nice bevel geometry. The curved shape allows you to pinpoint which spot on the wood you want to hit and uh, be able to touch it without bottoming out because of the flatness of the blade. The blade's pretty perfectly flat, both in a cross section and along the side. I don't love this tang design of modern knives where uh, the round stock just goes straight into the handle without any taper. That's a little bit crude and ugly and leaves a weak point right there. 
but that's fine because this knife doesn't flex too much, just a little bit, and I don't use it hard enough where it would be flexing. If the knife was more robust, I would use it for a lot more things. So since it's pretty delicate, I just keep it very sharp and use it for uh, fine shavings. For the most part, I use this for the early part of the tillering stages, mostly uh, floor tillering. I rough out my bows with this big one, and then I floor tiller with this, and I keep using this knife for as long as I can until I start to feel like I'm losing control. And then I'll switch off to spoke shaves and scrapers and that sort of thing. Now, other than my complaints about the way that the tang is made, I really like the handles. I really like the blade design. I really like the edge geometry. The steel is fantastic. It holds an excellent edge. I've had this knife for about five years and I've used it really heavily and it's still in great shape. There is a minor crack in the blade that was present in the factory. I don't think I'll be able to show you. It's really hard to see, but so far it hasn't affected the knife. This didn't come with varnish, which is a great plus. And I like to keep some tacky beeswax and uh, pine tar mixture onto the handle to give it some nice grip. That way I don't have to hold it very tight. A nice loose grip really helps me feel everything I want to. All right, let's take some shavings. Can you use it bevel down? Yes, you can, but I don't really like to. It really doesn't carve as well. This is a fantastic knife and one of the only modern ones that I say holds up to a lot of vintage knives. It's not as robust as they used to make them, but they just don't make them like they used to. By the way, this knife retails for about $70 to $80, which I think is a pretty good price for the quality. However, later on I'll be reviewing the Oxhead Ghidori knife of the same dimensions, which is suspiciously similar and I think they actually might be made in the same factory or almost the same knife. So later on, I'll let you know what I think about that one. The Oxhead knife of the same size retails for about $44, so it's almost half the price. So if it's as good, that's definitely what you should buy. Okay, speaking of the Oxhead, here it is. So far, the only difference I can tell compared to the Two Cherries knife is that this comes with blue paint on the handle, which I really don't like and will take off very soon. And it has a different logo stamped in. Otherwise, I really think it might be the same knife. Let's see how much they weigh. Five hundred sixty-four grams for the ox head. And 572 for the two cherries. That's pretty close. I wonder if they really are the same knife. Okay, let's see how the oxide carves. But first, let's take off some of this horrendous varnish and paint. I like to take it off in streaks, which gives a nice texture and uh, still let some of your sweat absorb into here.
Okay, so here we have it. There's no need to take off all of the varnish if you don't mind this streaky look. I kind of like it and I feel like it gives me good texture. The last thing I like to do is put a little bit of um, beeswax, pine resin, and olive oil mixture onto the handle. Okay, there we have it. All right, here's just a little side-by-side -side comparison between these two knives. Their profiles are exactly the same. The handle shape is exactly the same. The little cap on the handle is the same. These, like all of the little nicks and remnants are the same. I think these knives are made in the same factory or are pretty much the same thing. So how's the factory edge on the ox head? This is just about how I remember the two cherries knife coming. It's, it's pretty sharp out of the factory, not razor sharp, but certainly good enough to take some nice shavings. Yeah, it's really good. There's a nice sharp bevel on it. It's not quite as sharp as the way I have the other one, but that's just a matter of a little bit of time on the whetstone. Great knife. Down. Yep. Let's bring you in close. Okay, and this is the factory edge. I've done absolutely no sharpening on this. I'd say that cuts really well for a knife right out of the box. Later on, I'll show you how I sharpen it and we'll get it carving just like the other one. I think over time I've changed the bevel just a little bit. The factory bevel seems to be a little bit wider, but I think that's how it probably was on the two cherries originally. This knife retails for about $70 to $80, and I paid $43 for this one. So this is definitely the one you should pick up. I really recommend this knife. If you'd like to pick this knife up, I have links to all of the commercially available knives. You can find those in the description of the video. Next up is the 10-inch straight draw knife from Oxhead Gidore or Oshinkov. They're calling it the 250 millimeter light pattern drawing knife. And I'll be comparing this to a very similar knife, also from Two Cherries. I can't find this exact model anymore, but it's suspiciously similar to this one, except that the ox head is slightly larger. If I'm not mistaken, this used to be sold in a slightly larger size as well. So maybe they are the same, maybe they're very similar. Let's check it out. At first glance, it seems like almost the same knife, but just a little bit bigger and a little bit thicker. The two Terry's is about 0.41 centimeters. And the ox head, 0.53 centimeters thick. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a good amount beefier the two cherries is considerably floppier. It also seems like there's a lot of extra weight, so I'm really hopeful to try this one out. This one feels a lot heftier than the two cherries, and I think that added weight's gonna be really nice for carving. The two cherries weighs 401.6 grams. Okay, so the ox head's about 100 grams heavier. The factory edge is 
decently sharp, not too much. At least it's nice and smooth, so it'll be easy to sharpen this to a really sharp razor edge. This is the 10 inch straight draw knife from Oxhead or Gidore, straight from the factory. It probably ought to be sharpened, but I'm just gonna show you how we carve straight from the factory. It's a little on the dull side, so it's fraying the shavings. You see that? Compared to, here's the two cherries with a sharp edge. See how those are much smoother? Back to the ox head. You can see the chips are a little fuzzier. Could do with the sharpening, but really not bad for a straight from the factory. Up next is my absolute favorite draw knife I've ever had. It's the L and IJ White Timber Framing Draw Knife. It has a 14 inch blade and about 27 inches of overall length. This thing weighs about 2.2 pounds, so it's the size of a serious hatchet. This thing can move a lot of wood. The neat thing about this knife is this very subtle curve on the bottom. It's flat in cross section, but not quite along the length. And that subtle curve allows you to hit exactly the part of the wood you're aiming for. I love the handles on this knife. There's no fuss. The tapers going into the handle are so robust and elegant. This is a wonderful knife. A lot of bowyers will tell you that this is a little bit too big and that draw knives this big are a little silly to use. I strongly disagree. Clearly, I use this knife a lot in my videos. Um, the wide profile really allows you to engage your back muscles rather than just carving with your hands and forearms, which will tire you out. If you put your legs and back into this thing, you can move a lot of wood. This knife is so solid. It does exactly what you ask it to do, and it carries so much momentum, it can rip through amazingly large cuts. This draw knife is probably about 80 to 120 years old. I'm not really sure, but if you're good at dating these things, I really like to know what you think. I got this at a flea market for about $20. It's pretty pitted, which unfortunately does affect the edge. And I don't want to take off all this material to get past the pitting. Once in a while, there are little, uh, pits that affect the blade. Anyway, I don't need this knife to be razor sharp because I'm using it for rough outs and I want it to have a little bit more of a splitting rather than a slicing action. And that's why I don't mind that it's flat rather than curved. Whereas for a slicing draw knife, I like a really curved profile. Okay, let's show you how this thing carves. Here's a knife I plan on restoring, but I haven't gotten to yet. It's a DR Barton number 16, another timber framing knife. The handles are loose, needs a little work. This is a good example because you can see someone ruined the blade by sharpening it on the backside. Usually you'd only want to sharpen the bevel. You want to keep the bevel as flat as you can and keep the back as flat as you can in cross section. When the back's been sharpened, it's really hard to guess what angle you need to hold the knife at in order to make the cut. 
Anyway, it's having some trouble biting. It's not that dull. But if it were properly set up, this would work much better. Anyway, restoring this might be a good project for a future video. Let me know if you'd like to see that. All right, here's another flea market draw knife. This is my dad's draw knife. Still has a lot of life left in it. You can see the forge weld right there. This is good steel, and this is mild steel or wrought iron or something softer and more flexible. This is a pretty nice draw knife. The only thing I don't like about it is that the blades are at a pretty straight angle, which means that you pretty much have to hold the knife by friction, which tires your hand out a little bit more. For comparison, here's a knife where the handles are set at an angle to the blade. The difference is that I have a little bit more purchase on the grip, so I'm not pulling straight with friction. Since I'm pulling a little bit sideways, I can keep a loose grip and still pull on the knife. Whereas if I kept a loose grip with this knife, it would just slip right out of my hand. Now where the straight handles come in really nicely are if you use your knife beveled down, because now you have a angled handle. So if you prefer to use your knife beveled down, you may find that a straight handle is more comfortable. Since I use my knife bevel up, I tend to prefer a pretty steep angle on my handles. Now there's nothing too special about this knife. This is pretty typical of what you'll find at a flea market. I paid about, I think 10 or 20 bucks for this. It's really sharp. And it carves wood pretty well. Here's another Barton draw knife. This is the number nine. I'm about halfway done restoring this. I've done most of the work on the edge. Still needs to be a little bit sharper. And I need to change out the handles because they're a little bit wobbly. This is a great knife all around. It seems to work better in a beveled down orientation, um, but it does work both ways. You can see that like this knife here, it has a smaller bevel on the bottom rather than being flat across the whole bottom. Of course, the top bevel is still smaller. So you can see the knife has a subtle curve here, not too much, and just a little bit in this axis. So far, I found that this knife seems to work better uh, bevel down rather than bevel up. So it's not my usual preference, but some people really prefer a bevel down knife. Some people really prefer a bevel up knife. I like them both depending on the situation of the knife. This one clearly seems to work better. Bevel down. Let me show you how it carves. Okay, bevel up first. Bevel down. There's one more knife I'd like to show you that I don't have in my possession, and that's a Swan draw knife that my friend currently has. In general, Swan draw knives are really worth looking out for. The steel is great, the design is great, they have a very classic vintage look, and I really like these knives. So that covers all my draw knives that I like. Now I'm going to talk about the ones that I really don't like. This is the Mora draw knife. Um, I hate to criticize Mora because 
I really like the brand. I have more tools pretty much everywhere in my shop. Over there, I have several more carving knives, general utility knives. I have the 120, I have several 106s, I have more over there. I use Mora tools all the time, and in general, I would blindly say that anything by Mora is great, except for this, which is junk. I generally hate hybrid tools that are designed for two different things. They're never going to do both things that well. This sort of is a compromise between a draw knife and a fro, and it's terrible at both. Um, you can see that it's a double bevel tool, which makes it a pretty bad draw knife, and it's just way too flimsy to be a fro. It's also too flimsy to be a good draw knife. You can see that the tangs are thin. That's perfectly fine in a carving knife like Mora makes, but it's way too light. It's way too flimsy to be a good draw knife. Um, I don't like this thing at all. It's bad at carving. This was one of the first draw knives that I had, and it sort of gave me the impression that bow making was a lot harder than it was. Um, I don't even use this for splitting wood. I think it's bad at both of the intended purposes. And I really wish that Mora would design an amazing draw knife because if any company is well positioned to make an amazing draw knife for the masses at a great price, it's Maragnev. So I hate to say it, this thing sucks. Mora can do a lot better and I really hope they will. I'm looking forward to the day they design a much nicer draw knife. Okay, next is another knife that I don't have and it's the Flex Cut. Um, the Flex Cut three inch draw knife. I haven't tried the five and I'm not going to. My thinking was that a little tiny draw knife like this would be great to reach into little nooks and crannies where a big draw knife didn't reach so well. What I didn't realize is that a carving knife is way better than a tiny draw knife for getting into those spots. Anyway, I'm at the Woodcraft store, I pick out this draw knife, I bring it to the counter, and this very knowledgeable older man at the counter asks me, are you sure this is the draw knife you want? And I cockily said, yeah, I'm sure. I think it'll be great. And he asked me again, are you really sure this is the draw knife you want? And I should have listened to him. There was something in his tone. He knew it was a crappy draw knife. So I took it home. I carved with it. And uh, the good things I have to say about it are that the bevel is great, the steel is great, and it comes sharp. But that's about it. In general, I find flex cut tools to be a little bit gimmicky and designed in a flashy way, designed to get your attention and not actually to work that well at their intended function. This draw knife was no exception. Um, they claimed that you can bend it to reach the spot that you're trying to carve, sort of like a cabinet scraper. Um, but the difference is that it's an advantage in a scraper to be able to bend it, whereas if a draw knife bends, that means it's flimsy crap. I will say that there are some carvers who like the three inch draw knife from FlexCut, but they tend to work much smaller things like spoons and little carved figurines and that sort of thing. For making bows, it's way too light, it's way too small, it's way too flimsy. The handles are a terrible, unergonomic shape. They're designed to trick you into looking like they're ergonomic, but it's just a gimmicky design overall. Terrible draw knife. A day ago, I would have said it was the worst draw knife I've ever used, but now that spot goes to this. This is the cheapest draw knife on Amazon, based on my limited research. There are, I think there are some that are a little bit cheaper, but they're not tools that I would categorize as draw knives. The first thing I'll say is that this is probably intended for removing bark and not actually carving wood. And I'm sure it's actually decent for the money at that. I paid about $20, $22 for it. And uh, I think it'll take bark off. It does not carve wood. The handle design, if you twist it just a little bit, it starts to come off. So I've tightened these as hard as I can, even with tools, and I can still get them loose while I'm working. This varnish is really annoying, but if you're removing bark, it might be nice because um, you're dealing with very wet wood. <sighs> it's the cheapest, but you're going to think bow making is a lot harder than it really is if you buy one of these. I absolutely cannot recommend it. Plus, this is a very small draw knife. This is the five inch draw knife from Feld. I believe if you buy the 10 inch, it's about 30 to $33. So it's the same price as the ox head draw knife, which is a serious usable draw knife. There's absolutely no reason in my opinion to buy one of these knives that has this 
silly little nut system to hold the handle on. It's an awful design and it's really gonna frustrate you if you're making bows. I'm sure that you could sharpen this to the point where you got a nice edge on it and you'd be able to work wood with it. I'm just not gonna do that because I hate this design so much and I'm never gonna use it. So let me show you how bad this thing is. The factory edge, by the way, is totally dull, completely dull. Will not carve wood. This is tough hickory, so it's hard to carve. And this is the factory edge, so I'm not surprised it's a little bit dull, but I still would expect a little bit more. Here's the factory edge on the 10 inch oxhead draw knife. And it worked great, even on this tough hickory. Okay, let's give this thing another chance. This is some Douglas fir, about half the density of the hickory. It barely takes a shaving off the corner. And for comparison, the $33 Oxhead knife completely different tool. Just to be clear and to make sure I'm being fair, I don't know if this knife is designed to carve wood. Everything about it makes me think it's designed to carve bark. And in that case, the fact that it's dull may actually be an advantage. But as far as carving wood, uh, don't waste your time. You're wasting 20 bucks. You should just spend a little bit more and get one of these, or a little, little bit more and get one of these. This is what I really recommend, but if you want to spend a little less and you like straight knives, this is what I recommend. Okay, here's a seasoned maple sapling, so it's totally dry. Let's see if we can debark it. Okay, so it's not the worst for debarking. I'm not going to call it good, but the fact that it's so dull makes it hard to nick the wood. So if you're not very comfortable debarking without nicking the wood, this might come in handy. I'm curious to try it out on a piece of seasoned hickory to see if it'll take that bark off, because that stuff's like concrete. Now, obviously you could sharpen this to get it to carve much better. Um, it might be a little bit unfair that I'm criticizing this tool without having sharpened it, but the oxhead tools come with a great edge right out of the factory. So I don't really see a reason to buy this. Okay, here's some seasoned hickory. Let's see if we can get the blade to bite. Oh, barely. It's not gonna work out well. Felled five inch draw knife, do not recommend. All right, let's talk about sharpening draw knives. There's a lot of material on YouTube about how to sharpen stuff. So I'm not going to teach you how to use a whetstone or how to use a diamond stone or how to sharpen with sandpaper. What I am going to do is give you a generalized checklist that you can go through so that you can understand how to sharpen a draw knife in general. If you've been having trouble with the sharpness of your draw knife, there's probably some step on this checklist that you're skipping. I think the problem that a lot of people have is they don't worry so much about the edge geometry and they go straight to sharpening. So if there are problems with your edge geometry and you try to sharpen, you're never really going to get anywhere. One more thing to consider when you're sharpening your draw knife is whether you actually want a sharp knife. There are a lot of cases where you don't. If you're debarking, you might want to have a slightly duller knife that's a little bit harder to dig into the wood. The same thing goes if you're chasing rings. A lot of bowyers like to have a very dull knife for chasing rings um, so that you can slide through the crunchy early wood layer without digging into your solid late wood, which would make you have to chase another ring. So in a lot of cases, if you sharpen too much, that could be counterproductive and it will just make your edge more delicate than it needs to be. Uh, don't sharpen more than you need to. For the most part, draw knives for bow making don't have to be as sharp as, for example, a chisel or a carving knife. For those things, it's nice to form a burr, get the thing razor sharp. None of that is necessary for these tools. So when it comes to edge geometry, what do you want? It's actually pretty simple. 
we want the bottom to be a nice flat line in cross section and a flat bevel on the top and you want them to meet at a point. You actually don't want a draw knife to be razor sharp, just my opinion. Um, if you do bother getting a draw knife razor sharp, it'll be blissful for a minute or two, but as soon as you do anything rough, you're gonna start to chip up your edge, and then it's gonna be much harder to sharpen again. So I think you just want a flat bevel, a flat bottom, and you want these two planes to meet on a nice sharp edge. So step one on the checklist is the bottom of the draw knife flat. So if you look at this knife, it has a very gentle curvature. What you want is for the knife to be flat along this axis. So if you take a cross section, it's gonna look like a line right there. If the bottom's not flat, then you're gonna use some sort of coarse sharpening tool, whatever you prefer whether that's a whetstone or a diamond stone or some kind of power tool. If you do use power tools, just be really, really careful because you can very quickly burn the steel or ruin the temper. Uh, if you use power tools, keep a lot of water handy, keep a wet towel handy so that you can quickly cool the knife if things get too hot. You can really ruin your draw knife in a hot minute with a power tool. All right, step two. Are there chips in the blade or is the edge nice and smooth? If there are chips in your edge, then you're gonna to wanna to bring down the whole edge and form your bevel again. Or you can just keep working the bevel until all the chips disappear. All right, step three. At this point, we've got a flat back, a flat bevel with no chips in the edge. And now it's just a matter of polishing everything down until we have a smooth, sharp edge. There's gonna be a lot of personal preference here and all of this really depends on how sharp you wanna get your knife. I like to start with a 600 grit whetstone. Uh, if the knife's already pretty sharp, then I'll work with a thousand. There's no need to go too much sharper than that. You don't need a mirror polish. You don't need a razor sharp edge. You don't need to be forming over a burr like you might've been taught to do with a knife. Um, none of that is necessary since we don't need a razor sharp edge. We just want two flat bevels meeting at a sharp, smooth edge. If there are chips in your draw knife and you're not able to get them out with a whetstone or a diamond stone, then the trick that's worked for me is to use a Dremel with a sanding wheel. I know that sounds like a horrible suggestion and you should be very careful if you take my advice about this, but Dremels with a sanding wheel have gotten me out of some tight spots before. And once again, as with any power tool, keep some water handy and never let the steel get too hot. You can burn your steel really quickly and totally ruin the temper. By the way, I would not ever use a, a Dremel on the back of the knife. It's pretty hard to maintain the flat with a Dremel, but they are handy for forming the bevel. All right, let's show you an example. The back of this knife is already pretty flat, so I'm gonna start off with a thousand grit whetstone. If that's not the case, you're gonna to wanna to use something much coarser. The nice thing about these ox head draw knives is they come really flat out of the factory. So that's part of the reason why I recommend these. I think $44 for this draw knife and 33 for this one is a really good deal considering that you already have great edge geometry right out of the factory. I'm gonna put down a rag so I don't get my vise all dirty. Take the whetstone. And keep some water nearby so that you can keep wetting this as you need. Now we're gonna start working the back, back and forth. Applying some light pressure. And you can see, this is already getting shinier. You can see already how much metal is starting to come off the knife.
when it starts to get a little dry, give it a little spritz of water. And by the way, I push a little bit harder on the stroke away from me and I relieve some of the pressure on the stroke towards me. That way I don't dig into the whetstone. So I put down pressure, light pressure, pressure, light pressure. So you don't actually need the whole back to be flat as long as you get the whole edge. I still haven't hit the whole edge. I've shinied up this portion and I still need to hit this right here. So I'm gonna keep going. If you have a draw knife with a fuller, that's a really great place to stick your thumb. And you know you're doing it right when you start to feel a little bit of suction between the draw knife and the blade. And you'll see these neat fractal patterns. Get in there, need a little more off of here. Now, if you feel you need to, it's also okay to go freehand. For sharpening draw knives, I'm gonna say the direction of sharpening doesn't really matter. You can go in circles, you can go sideways, you can go up and down. All of them are gonna work. Getting close, still need a little more off of here. If you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, it's always okay to use a coarser grit. I don't like to use too coarse of a grit on the back because then you end up spending a lot of time getting those scratches out. This is a 600 grit whetstone. Okay, I'm getting closer here. So I'm gonna switch off to one of these uh, small, soft Arkansas stones. I got this from Dan's Whetstone Company. No affiliation. See how this is all getting shiny along the edge? As you get close, you're going to start to see that the stone gets suctioned down to the knife. Actually, you can hold it upside down. By the way, make sure that you're never tilting up your whetstone. You want to keep it flat against the back, otherwise you're going to start to form a secondary bevel. Almost done. Now I'm switching up to a hard Arkansas stone. Okay, that's about good enough for me. You can see that it's sharpening mostly here and here, and the blade is slightly hollow along the middle. So we've gotten the whole edge. Now we're ready to do the bevel. Sharpening the bevel is about the same as sharpening the back of the knife. You can do it in your vise, you can do it freehand. I'll show you a little bit of both. In the vise, this is just a little bit trickier because you have to hold the knife at a higher angle to match the bevel angle.
One little trick to make sure you're holding the knife at the right angle is to watch the slurry. See that little meniscus? When it connects the gap, oop, there we go. See that? Then you're at the right angle. Sharpening freehand is going to look exactly the same as before. So I'll keep going at this and I'll show you when I'm done. Once, once again, you want to keep your whetstone flat on the bevel. When you can feel that suction, you're doing it right. Use whatever combo of grits you need to get rid of all those sanding marks right at the edge. Okay, I'm just about done here. You don't need to get the whole bevel shiny, as long as the very edge is shiny. You can see that once again, I've polished up this edge and this edge, and the middle is slightly concave compared to the rest. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but this is already super sharp. I'm gonna strop it up to get it a little bit sharper and smooth that edge out and then we'll give it a test carve. I put a little polishing compound on the strop. And then we're gonna to go to town on the back and the bevel. We got this thing nice and sharp. It's by no means razor sharp, but as far as bow making goes, this is plenty good enough. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna start with a piece of juniper. This is Eastern Red Cedar, also known as Aromatic Cedar. Oh yeah. Let's bring you up close. All right, now for a fair comparison, let's go back to that piece of really hard hickory.
And that's how I make this texture right here. Just taking off those little grooves. for today. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if you want a PDF of the notes, you can always find those on my website. There's a link down in the description of the video where you can also find links to all of the commercially available knives that we talked about today. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, may your arrows fly true and your draw knives stay sharp.